Well, howdy, folks. Sure is a long time since we've all gotten together down this old dusty trail to talk. Uh, in case you don't remember us, we're uh, p- people who used to be on the show Wild Cards. And we've got a, a little bit of a Wild West fun going for you. <laughs> if you're a Doomtown player, which you probably are if you're watching this, you're going to want to uh, watch this video. But I've brought two people who know nothing about Doomtown, so we can tell them a bit about it. I'm Jordan Pridgen. And I'm Grav Galati. Hello. And I'm Dom Zook. Hi. And we are here today to spoil two of the new cards from the upcoming Doomtown set, uh, which is Debt of Blood. And if you if you are a Doomtown player, you might know that we already have three cards from our show Wild Cards that represent the characters that are already in the game. Uh, Marshall Caves Kaladin, I think the card is called. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ros- Rosaline Byrne and then, of course, Gabriel Pryor, my card. Uh, but there's two more characters left, uh, Dom and Garav's characters, and they're going to be in this next set. So we are going to show them for you today. You guys don't really play Doomtown much, and I, I you know, have been a big fan of it. So I'll be explaining the rules to you, and you guys can give a little bit of color commentary on, on how you feel about your characters and stuff like that. OK. OK. Sounds good. <laughs> so let's get started with the first of these cards, James Bogue. Ooh, Ooh. okay, that's my guy. Got it. All right. (laughs) Yeah. This is James Bogue, everyone. As you can see, James is a four of spades. He is a two stud. Remember, the silver bullets are better than the copper bullets. He has one influence. And he, uh, his cost in the bottom left is five ghost rock. And then his upkeep is one ghost rock. So that basically means to play him, you're gonna have to spend five, and then to keep him around, you're gonna have to pay one for him every turn. Now, uh, two stud is like a pretty solid stud. It, it, makes, it means he's a good guy to have in your posse in a shootout. He's gonna be a solid shooter, and even if he's not your shooter, he's gonna contribute you know, to the number of cards you draw in your hand that actually wins things. And uh, one influence means he's like imposing, he's got influence, but, uh, it's it's not crazy or anything like that. Like Gabriel had two influence, and uh, <laughs> mm, mm, <laughs> stuff <see>. like that. <laughs> I know. Uh-huh. But here's the meat of James Bogue. He has a react ability, which means something has to happen to trigger it and make it happen. Okay. And it's after your posse containing James suffers one or more casualties in a shootout. James gets plus one bullets for the rest of the shootout. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So. What that, in Doomtown, shootouts are done in rounds. So like you get your posses together and everybody shoots at each other. And then depending on who came out on top of that round of the shootout, each side has to like take casualties. So, you know, if you get shot a couple times. So the idea is that if somebody on James Bogue's posse dies in the first round of a shootout, he gets bigger for the next round of the shootout. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. He's got a vengeance thing going on, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. And it's important see. to note that he's a drifter. So he, he doesn't have a faction uh, affiliation, which means you can run him in pretty much any deck and you're not going to suffer any sort of penalty for running him outside of the faction. Okay. okay. Nice. Nice. Mercenary for hire. Yeah, that's right. cool. Yeah. he's a He is a bounty hunter, so that makes sense. Yeah. And, and I. Adding bullets just makes me think of his fan the hammer uh, ability that yeah. I used a lot oh, in yeah. the game. Just adding and oh. the, the the revenge element yeah. is is like pretty on flavor for him. Right. That's, That's cool. also got like the little bit of sacrifice to make things better, kind of like a the life drinker sort of feel there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like in the show, if like someone got shot during a round of combat. Next round, James would load one extra bullet into his <laughs> gun. <laughs> so He'd be like, I'm gonna shoot you back. <laughs> you know, I'm just squeeze two bullets in this one chamber. That was no, really gonna hurt. Yeah. I, I will say though, two two stud is like a solid stat, and then three stud is a really good shooter. So yeah. I, I could see like one of the things that can often happen in uh Doomtown, at least when I played, the cards are sort of new now, so things do change is that there are ways to like pin down the opponent's shooter and make it so that they uh, like have to take them out first. So it could make sense to use James as sort of like a backup shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, if something goes wrong, he gets really big 
And then, I mean, three stud in this case means that when you're drawing the poker hand to play the game, you draw three extra cards. Oh, wow. And that's huge. Yeah, that's a great, that's, that's a killer advantage. Yeah. yeah. It's really big. He does cost five, which is actually, I, I think, is, is pretty good for these stats. Like, okay. five Ghost Rock is, like, pretty manageable, and he only has one upkeep. Uh, which does mean you have to like make it worth it to keep him around. But luckily, because he has that one control, you're going to be able to use him to hold down locations, either your own ones, which will help you like get the ghost rock you need to, you know, keep paying for him and stuff, or go to their other, go to their places, take control of it from them. And then if he is threatening someone else's place, he's got, you know, nice bullets on him. So he's going to be a tough guy to contest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's a four of spades, which I don't know if you remember from when you played Jordan, what kind of decks would want a four of spades. I mean, because it's based on the poker hand you can create out of the 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 card and number, obviously the spit the suit number. He definitely strikes me as as he's going to be like part of a, a like shootout deck, one that's like trying to, uh, you know, really like get into scraps and survive it. Probably, um, I I don't really know like what cards are on four that would go with him. But, you know, I, I tended to like to build uh, four of a kind decks where you're trying to like put all, you know, you'd pick a couple values like two, four and eight, and then you would build the deck around all of those combos and, and cards that like, fit into that. I, I, I think that lines up really well with his character. Um, he's who you want to have in uh, in a fight, really. So, yeah. So did, yeah. did, did, did you talk with them about the uh, the flavor text on this? Yes. Tom? Yes. So, so we, I offered a few different, uh, things for flavor text. Um, this, this one, if I'm looking for you, it's never good. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, just him being a bounty hunter and, um, he, he, he eventually finds <laughs> who he's after. I mean, it took a few seasons, took five seasons, <laughs> but he, yeah. he got him. He got him. He only had to like die and lose his family. Yeah. And and most of the people he cared about and stuff like, like that. Did Regular vengeance things, you know. Re vengeance was worth it though, yeah, right? it was totally, totally worth it. Worth it. Oh, Didn't Rosaline so actually it. kill the Baron? Anyway, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> so I he really so. never got, you know, the <laughs> satisfaction. Anyway, but hopefully if you're playing with James Bogue in your hand, you will get the satisfaction. Yeah. 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 I think he seems like a pretty sweet card. Yeah. He's pretty good. Oh, We've got another pretty sweet card here. To finish off the whole Wild Cards posse, mm -hmm. we have Howling Hal Melton. There Woo! he is, the big guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I really like the design of this card. So let's let's read over the stats first. Sure. First, Howl is a nine of spades. Uh, all, all dudes are spades, so that's why you know we all got that there. Gotcha. Um, right. But he is also a two stud. So a pretty solid shooter himself and two influence. So he is a, a man of stature in town. You notice him when he's around. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, then he costs six Ghost Rock to play. So he's a little more expensive um, than James Bogue was. And I would say like the difference between five and six in the game is like somewhat significant. It starts getting yeah. into the like, expensive territory, mm -hmm. but he only has, still has one um, uh, upkeep. Now, because he is also an entrepreneur, which means that if you're trying to run him in a non-entrepreneur deck, uh, basically his upkeep is going to be increased by a lot. So you're pretty much only going to see Hal and Hal Melton in uh, entrepreneur decks because he's mm -hmm. going to basically have an upkeep. He's going to basically have an upkeep of three if yeah. you um, run him in another deck. But I, I love this ability. It's really cool. Noon boot. So this means just when you're out, you know, on a regular turn, not in the middle of a shootout or something out, you can call out an opposing dude at this location whose controller must pay you one additional ghost rock to conf to refuse. So this means you start a shootout with someone on the other team, and if they like want to be a coward about it, if they think they're going to lose, they have to pay you a ghost rock. So one, that's a great way to generate money. Already like makes it kind of easy to like pay back the upkeep that's going to cost on him. Mm -hmm. No other dudes may join this shootout. So it's just a one-on-one -on -one fight, uh, which is is pretty interesting. There's a couple other like cards and dudes that kind of do that for, for this dual sort of feel. But this is the part that I, I really like. The shootout ends after one round and reduce casualties on both sides by two. 
If no dude is aced, the winner gains two ghost rocks. So what that means is that a lot of times it'll just be like a one-time fight. And if you don't win by a lot, the other dude doesn't even get knocked out. Like it could end up that you both kind of, if, if you end up pretty close in how it was, it'll just be like, well, I won by a bit. And then <laughs> whoever wins will get two ghost rocks. So if you beat them with Hell and Hell Melton, you get two ghost rocks. But this is also kind of funny. If you win by too much and the dude dies <laughs> and gets ace, you don't get any money. <laughs> Oops. Murdered a guy. Yeah, you uh, you were supposed to throw the fight. That's okay. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's okay to win. It's okay to win by a bit. <laughs> Because yeah. if, if you win by three, if you win, so there would be three extra casualties on the thing, it'll just reduce it down to one, and then their dude will be discarded. They'll just be like knocked out and have to come back into the game. But if you win yeah. by if you win by four or more, you killed them. Yeah. And that's a problem. That's a big oopsie. Yeah. So yeah, I, I do love the flavor of this card. Um for the people who didn't watch wild cards or don't know about these characters. Howell was a uh, just a farmer, a, basically a, a, a ranch person who owned a ranch with his family, and he, uh, you know, work. He was a big burly guy because he did all that work. And once his family was, uh, his wife was taken from him, he set out to find her. And one of the things he did was a sport, short stint as a prize fighter, which which is where he got the name Howell and Howell Melton. And so this card evokes that feeling of being a prize fighter. He doesn't want to kill anybody, but he does want to fight for money to, you know start the expedition to find his wife basically um so it's super flavorful in that sense even if you don't know what uh wild cards is or any of our characters him being a prize fighter is definitely in there in the ability which i think is super cool yeah i i think it's pretty cool um i also like i i could see this playing really well in like uh, uh, I've seen a couple like straight flush decks out there that just have lots of clubs and ways to, because clubs are like action abilities that you use in combat. Um, like there's one that's called uh, called Sun in Your Eyes. And oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that's a that's a three of clubs. And basically the, the version of it now uh, says, I think they changed it up a little bit, but it's in a shootout. You can say target dude in the shootout gets minus two bullets or becomes a draw. You may spend one ghost rock to give both effects to that dude. And I oh. think that that feels like it's going to fit really well because one, you're going to be making up the ghost rock if you like spin that on it. So I, I kind of see him being really good if you have just a lot of ways to get that into a one-on-one -on -one fight. And then, I mean, the thing is, you can either get the ghost rock out of it if you beat them by like a little bit, if you just are, you know, going for a flush. Uh, but then if you manage to pull off the like straight flush, which is, you know, a, a much higher hand in the whole thing, then if you ace their dude, that's fine. <laughs> that's I, still yeah, good I mean, for you. It's right. still it's still right. good. You don't get the money, but you, you don't get kill the money. Dude. But yeah. yeah you got rid of a dude. And yeah. I, I, and uh, Mel how Melton was always like like he didn't know his own strength a lot of the time i feel sure. like mm -hmm. and yeah. and and i feel like it's it if he killed someone he'd be oh well i, I can't take your money <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it's funny because I, the 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 faction that he's in is the entrepreneurs which at first i was like how was never really an entrepreneur mm -hmm. but this time of his life was the only time where money was a big part of his yeah uh, identity right. a little bit just because he was a prize fighter really leaned into it right um, well so and super the cool. entrepreneur faction also like does a lot of stuff that has to do with ghost rocks and earning right. ghost rock so he fits into that theme really well but also just like as a rancher and a working man and stuff since yep. you know it used to be morgan cattle company and then it was like really focused on like being ranchers and stuff but entrepreneurs have sort of expanded a little bit and mm -hmm. it, it's just about their approach to you know the the right. weird west and everything like that so right. i think i think it fits pretty well That's pretty and cool. it also means that we have a card in every faction and a drifter now because oh. gabriel is an anarchist uh oh and we, uh, that's not actually true we don't have a card in the uh the scientist yeah i'm suddenly drawing a blank on their name which yeah. is <clears throat> terrible of me but like the the abominations and stuff right. we, right. we don't have anyone there because we're all like sort of generally good guys, <laughs> right? Yeah, generally. That that would have to be that would have to be um, uh, Christopher, I think. And uh, that, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Part D. That, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I think Howl is going to be a really cool piece to add into a, a deck. And I mean, he is kind of expensive to get out, but he's the sort of thing that you could sort of turn into a, a money generator. Another card I think g could play really well with him. And I'm sure people who are watching this probably know the game better than I do at this point, but like Fleet Footed, which is another eight. So it could be played in a deck where you are playing him in it and trying to really load up on the eights, um, which has the ability to basically at noon, you can use it to send your dude home booted, which can be useful if if you start a fight with Howl, it does boot him wherever he is. So if he ends up out somewhere where he's a little vulnerable and you like don't mm. want him there anymore, it's a good way to send him home. But in the shootout, it also gives your dude plus one bullets and an opposing dude minus one bullets. And since that's gonna definitely be the shooter they have to pick in a fight, mm -hmm. that's a huge swing. I mean, that would yeah. put you up like chances are, especially if you've chosen, you know, wisely in who you're fighting, that's going to put them down to one or, you know, even zero bullets uh, while you're going to be kicked up to three. So, mm -hmm. and that gets into the, you could kill them kind of range. Um, so that's yeah. The, yeah. Wow. It's, um, it's really cool to see these characters in this game now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the way to play Hal and Hal Melton too, or the way I would like to play him a lot, is to like really bully people with him. Which I know is not the spirit what? of Hal yeah. and Hal Melton. Why would but you if do you go that? if you go like find someone who is a, a like a vulnerable person, even if there's a lot of other people in town, like if you find someone who is a you know, a one draw and is not uh -huh. going to be able to face him and you okay. use the ability to call him out, then they're gonna have to run home and mm -hmm. pay you a ghost rock or mm -hmm. die. So it's gonna be a good way to get rid of like utility characters without the worry that the people around them supporting them can jump into the shootout mm -hmm. and, and make things a little more even. Now, I have a question, Jordan. This is a rules question and I'm not sure if you remember this because the text says whose controller must pay you one additional ghost rock. If they refuse the fight, do they, usually pay you ghost rock or is uh, that just unless it's changed i don't okay. think you uh okay yeah I was, I was trying to figure out what the additional means but maybe there's another card that makes it more than that or something i don't yeah. know but it's interesting I, to see yeah. i think there are cards that if they want to refuse things need to pay ghost rock and stuff so i oh. think it's like if there is some other condition that stops them from you know being able to go home for free and run home booted then right. you know you gotta pay that. You gotta pay up. Got it. Very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Debt of blood. Yeah. I, I like this. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. I I I I I have I have two sets of the game. Nice. <laughs> Still. Oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 gonna buy this. I think I think I backed the Kickstarter uh, for this. I mean, why wouldn't I? have Our character. Right. It. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm excited to to like actually pull them out and and play. This makes me want to get get back into the game a little bit. I actually I kind of fell out because you know I was I was playing a lot um, in what is now called the old timer format. <laughs> because they, they reset the game mm -hmm. with, and again, Doomtown people watching this will already know what I'm talking about, but I'm telling you two, uh, <laughs> they they re sort of reset the game and put out a new starter set mm -hmm. and a new set of cards. And that's the you know new addition that they're playing. And then the old sets are, are called uh, old timer now. So all, all my decks are old timer decks, but yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. I gotta yeah. come back in and be the new kid in town and uh, start slinging some lead again. There you go. Yeah, play awesome. these cards. Yeah, can't wait to see them. Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah. I, I have one. I have one last question, Garav. Why didn't you have any flavor text? Oh, the funny story. Yeah, we did talk to uh, Pinebox about flavor text. They they emailed me, and we talked back and forth. Me and Jordan, and I settled on one, and it was about Gussie. Um, but okay. then I, when I saw the car, I'm like, oh, they just ran out of room. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, I didn't have the room left to talk about a horse. So a horse that doesn't why. have anything to do with prize fighting. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously that too, but, um, so if anybody, if anybody has this card and misses the flavor text, uh, bring it to me and I will write the flavor text that was supposed to be there. There we on go. It. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, thanks. Thanks again, Jordan. Um, th yeah. this, this was really cool. It was great to hang out with you guys and, um, yeah, check out, check out, go to Pinebox Entertainment. 
Uh, <laughs> and uh, get the new set. Get Dead, the of new set. Dead of blood. Dead of blood. Dead of blood. Dead of blood. We all. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.